This is the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Together, let's drive. Hello, everyone, and welcome to something new. It is the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show. I'm Joe Trahan, and listen, check this out. We got a new show, we got new digs, we got green carpet, we have a putting mat, which you know I had a lot to do with, but we want to thank you for being here. This is something new that we're doing on Sunday nights after sports special, um, not your typical highlight show. Instead, we're going to have opinions for you, lots of them. We're talking hot sports topics with guest contributors, athletes, media types, you name it. You'll see them here on this show talking about the sports you love here in the DFW area. Now, we'll mix in a little fun and games, too, which brings me to the person you just saw on the screen. You're probably wondering, hey, Joe, who is that guy? We want you to meet Andrew Seeley. He's our producer for the show. Now, Andrew, we need to come up with a new nickname since you're going to be on this show. I'm thinking Andrew Seeley, AC, because I need you to bring electricity to the show. I need you to, 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 to bring a current. Right. I need, I need a, a jolt, something. Can you handle that? I, I think we're forcing it a little bit, but as long as you're the DC, let's rock. All right, ACDC, I see where you're going with that. Andrew, uh, let us know, what do you got? What do we got today? All right, well, let's kick it off with what's on the show sponsored by NFM. Off the top of the show, we are talking Mavs. Dramatics on the court today, but more importantly, what does that mean for their playoff push? How far can this team go? We're also talking about your first place Texas Rangers, and we asked the question, is it okay to cheer in the press box, especially if you've been a fan before you join the media? And finally, Joe, the azaleas are in bloom. Oh, I know. It is Masters oh, Week. I know. Your Do favorite I? week of the year, I think. Close. Joe considers himself a golf expert, and he actually is. But we're going to play true or false around the Masters. That includes the tournament, the players. We got it all covered. All right, I think Andrew's going to try and trick me there. <laughs> we'll all find right, out. So we'll find out. Let's get this thing kicked off, and we'll do it by introducing our panel for this week. From 97 1 The Freak, we got Ben Rogers of the Ben and Skin Show. And for the Fort Worth Star Telegram, it is Matt Engel Gents. Thanks so much for joining us. We got to talk about these Dallas Mavericks right off the bat. Big win today, thrilling win today. Dante Exum with the three beating the buzzer to send it into overtime. And then afterwards, you had Luca and Kyrie hugging it out. Incredible. Incredible win. Um, let's start with you, Ben. How far do you think this team will go? All right, so the Western Conference is packed. Top 10 teams all have a shot. I, I could see the Mavericks going all the way to the Western Conference Finals. Uh, I could see them losing to the Clippers in the first round. I mean, it's, and that wouldn't even be a knock on, on the Mavericks. It's, that's how good the West is. But I think they're as good as anybody. The way that Luka and Kai are gelling with one another – it's it's the whole Superman Batman thing. They're clicking. They're hitting on all cylinders. It's going to come down to shot making. I know that's generic, but can the third, fourth, fifth, sixth most most important guys hit wide open I, jump I, shots? I will if they say can, they'll win. I will say this though, and this is what I love about what happened after the uh, after the trade de deadline acquisitions. They don't have to live and die by making shots anymore. This team can win in so many different ways now. And I do think Nico Harrison deserves some credit and Jason Kidd does as well. What do you think, Mac? Uh, I'm with Ben on this. I think one through eight or nine or 10 have a good shot to win their first round series. Uh, but I, I kind of tend to lean the way the old Mavericks coach Don Nelson used to say, which is usually the best team in the NBA wins the championship. And I think the Mavericks right now are one of the best teams in that second tier. The NBA is still a big, big man's game. And as good as the Mavericks are playing right now, like you said, we got to give Nico Harrison a lot of credit. Certainly Jason Kidd a ton of credit because we killed him about a month ago. The Mavericks don't have the biggest big guy in the league. They don't have Ant-Man in Minnesota. They don't have Jokic in Denver. And they don't have Giannis in Milwaukee. They've got a great team, a really, really good team. I think they're better than the Clippers. But I think as good as they are, I think the finals, the West finals is as far as they go, which to me, would be a tremendous win either way. No, I totally agree. That would be fantastic. But listen, these last 28 games, the turnaround that this team has made is, is absolutely remarkable. So I do want to dive a little bit deeper into that. I mean, what has impressed you most since that trade deadline acquisitions, Ben? You know, for me, it's uh, PJ. And, and look at how he's come along. Look at how now he's hitting his shots. But it gives them such length. And Gafford, obviously, good Lord. Uh, having two legit bigs when Lively's healthy. Um, you've got shot blocking rim runners. You're athletic. And, you know, you've got three, four, five guys who can block a shot at any moment. And that kind of gets into what you were saying where now the Mavericks, if they're not having a hot night, they can still win 
because of that defense. Yeah, that's what I love. I mean, before it was, listen, it, it got bad there for a while because it, it was make or miss Mavericks, right? If they're hitting the threes on a given night, they're going to beat a team. If they missed them, they might get blown out. I think they have a little bit more leeway in terms of being perfect because, listen, the game against the Rockets today, that defense uh, let them get back in that game after being down 20, and it, it was really interesting to watch, and this team just continues to take strides forward. I think the big thing to me is what Dante Exum gives that team flexibility-wise along the perimeter. And like Ben said, adding P.J. Washington mm. and Daniel Gafford has given them defensive players that they just didn't have. And Lively, as good as he's been, he's a rookie. And you know, I, I, you've got to give Jason Kidd a lot of credit because back there on March 5th, they get blown out at home against the Pacers again for the second time in like a week. And he's answering all kinds of questions. Basically, they're inferring that he's an idiot. He's lost the team, and this team can't guard me or you or anybody else. And in the last month and a day or so, they've ripped off, what, 14 to 16? Now they're almost fourth in the West. By the way, that's Mac Engel. He can talk for a long time. <laughs> Filibuster Mac at his best right there. All right, they we, call me Jerry. We, we are on a clock, right? We got to get it done before the Zoom time's out. So, Andrew, uh, what do you think about the first segment and where are we headed next? At this point, I, it all boils down to belief. If we look at 10 pole moments throughout the Mavericks season, that Nuggets win comes back to mind as one. E even though we don't know how this team will fare eventually yet, that's one that gives them the belief that they can go far. But... Now that we actually have put a bit of a bow on the Mavs discussion, let's move on and talk about the first place Rangers because they actually went to where the Mavs are trying to go. When we come back, we'll talk about the Rangers. Plus, we'll talk about whether it's okay to cheer in a press box. When we come back, stay with us on the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Today's headlines, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. The Rangers drop game three of their series with the Astros, three to one. South Carolina defeats Iowa to claim the women's NCAA championship and Akshay Batia won the Valero Texas Open in a playoff. Welcome back to the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show. As we mentioned off the top, it is our first episode. We appreciate everyone for being here. Joe, what do we got up next? Listen, we, we got more people coming because the show's so good, right? More people want to join the panel. Uh, ben and Mac are back. And then we've got one of my favorite people on the planet. Uh, she is a super talented anchor. She's also a Rangers super fan. The one and only, the great Teresa Woodard joins us now. Hey, T. Wow, what an honor it is to be on your first show. I am thrilled to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Well, as soon as we knew one of our topics was going to be your world champion oh, Texas yeah. Rangers, and I mean your world champion <laughs> Texas Rangers, Teresa, we had to get you on the, on the show. So let's start with this. What, what do you think about this hot start that they're off to? And then we can go around the panel. All right, so I'm ready for a repeat, okay? That's what I'm feeling <laughs> Already. like. Already? But no, I, I, seriously, I know it's way too early, way too early to start talking about that. But really, the way that 2024 has started feels a lot like the way 2023 ended, and I am in for it. And I will tell you, there's two names that are sticking out to me right now already. Marcus Simeon, I mean, what a performance he has had, and I feel like as goes Simeon, so go the Rangers. And then how about Cody Bradford? I mean, where did he come from to have these great pitching performances? And like any good Rangers fan, I will also say I am just thrilled that we have really beaten up on the Astros for at least a couple of first games in this series. I told you guys, she's a super fan. <laughs> you got it. Mac and Ben, what do you think? Uh, I think they're kind of like what Teresa said. They picked up where they left off. And I think early on, I mean, what are we in April? Just don't get blown out. This, this, this thing's a 10-month regular season. So just keep hanging on and sticking it out and keeping your head above water. And I think this team will be a playoff team again. Benny? Yeah, it's, uh, it's so exciting. Uh, White Lankford is so unbelievable yeah. to watch. Uh, such a phenom. But the thing that has me concerned about the Rangers is the regional sports television deal that, uh, <laughs> and all of their concern over that because uh, you know, they really weren't able to go out and address their needs this offseason. And for the first time ever, I saw Rangers ownership deferring money into next year, which to me is a little scary. And so, look, if they can stem the tide and, you know, look, they'll get uh, maybe Max Scherzer's back in, in June, you know, DeGrom's back in August. They got Tyler Molly coming back maybe in July. They can, they can make it through that, but they still didn't really get to address the need for a closer. And um, that's concerning to me. So I think we're going to be sweating some of these out later in the year. Well, listen, that's the one thing, you know, at the start of this season, what we've seen from LeClerc. I mean, it, it does give you pause, right? And the fact that they still, to me, 
the fact that they won that championship despite what that bullpen looked like at the end of last season is one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen in Major League Baseball and we are seeing some echoes of that early on hadn't heard a whole lot um, I, I, I think the overriding theme though is and as it will go the rest of the year in Bochi we trust mm -hmm. because they just keep stepping up in different ways and being there for opening night when they just created a teleportation machine and brought us all back to that championship run with the way they won that opening game was absolutely fantastic. And speaking of a teleportation machine, we actually do have some video queued up from one of our favorite <laughs> moments from last year's playoff run. If we could play that real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that was reaction of the WFAA crew. That was game one of the World Series when Adoli Garcia hit the walk-off home run. You see Teresa there, Rebecca Lopez, Matt Howerton screaming into the camera. Andrew's there too. We had a couple of our videographers. Everyone just absolutely going nuts. And that brings up our next topic. Listen, we are all professionals, but we're also all fans. So I'm curious, what moment has made you want to cheer in the press box and Teresa we got to start with you. <laughs> I mean, clearly you just saw it, right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but think about it. I mean, this is this is a team I have cared about and loved since I was born. And so experiencing that World Series run, I'm sorry, folks, I couldn't control myself. And I will say I come at this from a little bit of a different angle. I am a news reporter. I'm not a sports journalist. And so, you know, I felt like I could do that. I felt like it was okay for me to go a little crazy. And clearly, many of my colleagues couldn't concern, contain ourselves either. And I think the whole really fan base for Rangers Nation was right there with us. I got a lot of messages from folks who were saying, I feel it. I was on that ride with you, and I couldn't control myself either. Technically, we weren't in the press you got box, it. right? You got it. We were in center because field. The the press rule, area. Press the, area. Yes. The rule for our sports journalist is no cheering in the press box. So, all right, guys, the question uh, is there for you. Mac, you ever been close to, to pulling off that cheer in the press box? Uh, cheer? Uh, well, like the, the Corey Seager home run in game one of the World mm. Series last fall, I let out an oh! Oh my God, <laughs> I did let that one out. And there was so much noise, no one could really hear me. And it really comes down to that, Joe, which is don't make too much noise. Uh, the other time was I, I, I went to Kansas. I did my other undergrad at Kansas. And I was covering a Sweet 16 game at AT&T Stadium and they blew the lead. And uh, when they gave up a, a game tying three, point, uh, three pointer to Michigan, I might have let out some curse words, but <laughs> nobody could hear it. So nobody knows for sure. Biddy? Yeah, so uh, Skin and I didn't take a standard route into getting into sports media, and so I don't have a journalism degree, so <laughs> I can remember being in the press box in 2001 or two doing the ticket post-game show for the Mavericks, and uh, it was our first time in the press box, and we were cheering like crazy, high-fiving, yelling. Somebody came over and told us to stop, and I wanted to fight him. Uh, so uh, I, I, I quickly learned the rules, but uh, have tried not to follow them all along the way. Yeah. So, J Joe, you kind of dodging the question here. Have you ever done it? Because you were pretty stoic in what we just saw. Yeah, I was behind the camera. And I, listen, I was having fun watching them have fun, to be, to be perfectly honest. Um, there was one time, and it wasn't in the press box, though. It was, it was when the University of Texas last won the national championship in football. Vince Young scores. I was there. Not only was I there, I was in the corner of that end zone. And Vince Young being a Houston guy, his high school coach, I went to, I went to grade school with his daughters. We were all family friends. So I just started jumping up like crazy because this kid I'd been hearing about forever actually pulled it off and I was just feet away. So not technically in the press box, but yeah, I was cheering a whole lot the year that Texas won. Still, my top sports moment in person. That's it. Vince Young scores was the call from the great Keith Jackson. See, even the professionals have to cheer occasionally. It just comes with, the, it comes with the moment. Now, with this, we get to some fun stuff. We're hitting out some paddles and playing some true or false centered around Joe's favorite topic, the Masters. Stay with us on the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers.
Welcome back to the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show. It's our very first episode. We really appreciate you tuning in. And listen, this is not your typical sports talk show. We're going to gamify it. We're going to have a little bit of fun. And uh, I think Andrew's got something maybe nefarious cooked up for us. Nefarious might be a little strong, but we're going to have some know. fun we're playing uh, a little bit of a game called True or False. We mentioned off the top, Masters right around the corner. We thought it'd be a little bit fun to do a true or false in preparation for the big weekend. Joe's already got his putter right next to you, or his, his backup putter, as we like to say. Uh, these statements can be about the Masters or the golfs themselves, so get your paddles ready, and let's start with a softball. Okay. Tiger Woods has famously won five Masters tournaments, but he only has two green jackets. All right, three false, one true. The correct answer in this one, a little Sunday red, it is false. Ding, 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 ding. Now, this one should have been fairly obvious to people who know the Masters because you're only awarded one jacket after you wear it. However, with Tiger, there's a little caveat, and I was curious about this. He was much younger when he first won his, his first title, in 97, mind you. And then when he came back in 2019 and won it, much older. But as he famously said after he put the jacket on, it still fits, <laughs> which is pretty impressive at that age, I'll just say. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Next up, Augusta National shut down during World War II and became an arboretum. Mmm, that's a good one. I know. See, I, I told you you were going to be nefarious <laughs> about this. Um, mm, I'm going to say, no way. It is indeed false. All you guys right. are all on this one. I got one. one. <laughs> and Teresa's on the board. All right. Th this one was actually, instead of being coming an arboretum, it became a cow pasture. They completely wrecked the grounds entirely, which is out of character, but uh, it didn't last long. They switched it back around after in 1946, and the rest is history. They picked up right where they left off. Yes, indeed. All right, our third statement, true or false. Scotty Scheffler is afraid of heights. Mm. And feel free to discuss. I want, I'm curious what you guys are actually thinking when you're giving these answers here. Listen. I'm thinking that I'm totally guessing. I have no <laughs> idea. So uh, we'll just you know, have a disclaimer there. I appreciate your transparency. <laughs> with, with Scotty, listen, I... I I don't know how he could be afraid of heights with the heights <laughs> that he's reached with his golf game. Are you kidding me? That, that guy just keeps going. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going with false. All right, Joe's I'm false. Therese is true. What do you think, Mac? Uh, this is the reason why I'm doing this. This is no different than when I took the SAT. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way they're going with three consecutive falses. So it's kind of like the A, B, C, D. When it, I'm like, well, there's no way they're doing that again. I don't know the answer. I'm just going the way the previous two answers went. <laughs> <laughs> little game theory here with Mac, and it actually works so, out this time. It is true. Oh, All right. yeah. Scotty Scheffler is afraid of heights. This was in an article by Golf Digest. Hey, I, got, uh, I got your back, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> whatever works, man. All right. Statement number four: True or false? As a child, Jordan Spieth used to cut his own lawn so he could work on his game. Oh, that that sounds. Totally on brand with Jordan. I agree. That sounds so totally. Yes, indeed. I, he, he, and after he cut the lawn, then he'd go and he'd, they'd sneak in to the Byron Nelson. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. That, that he skipped graduation for the Byron Nelson famously in 2011. But this is indeed true. He did do this. And I can also say for a fact that as soon as my parents are seeing this, they're wishing it was me doing it instead. <laughs> no doubt. No All doubt. right. Moving on now. Our fifth statement, true or false, Scotty Scheffler's hobby is acquiring and maintaining high-end sports cars. Hmm. Oh, uh, have, you, have you seen the... Listen, I know this. <laughs> I know this. No way. He, he kept that old beater of a car for years. He might still be driving that thing. Joe has taken away my punchline here. Three falses, one true, and it is indeed false. Hey. Scotty actually used the same car he had in high school up until at least 2022. By the, by the way, we got one more question, and after that, I'm going to excoriate AC, our producer. Oh, come on. Just I got wait, you on folks. One. I got Just you on one. I'm teasing you for that. Watch this. All right, all right. Here we go. Final question. Joe Trahan has played around at Augusta National. Oh, that's too easy. Is this true or false? That's too easy. Now, Joe, hold off on your answer, I obviously. <laughs> okay. Does Joe know it? First of all, <laughs> bless the three of you, but unfortunately, it is. Oh. Oh. Listen, not yet. Not uh, yet. You can't the ask to play at Augusta if you know a member. I do now know members at Augusta, and while I can't ask them, I can't ask the good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord can't get on <laughs> to at Augusta. That wish. By the way, 
by the way, I just want everyone to know that before we take this, our <laughs> producer, our esteemed producer, Esteems. thought that I was only going to get one of those No, right. no, no. I, he's that, just quoting that's me what here. you said. This is fake news, all right? I told him for a fact he, would, he wouldn't only get one, but I could guarantee he was going to get one right because of the last question, which he did. <laughs> I hope he did. Uh, I got five out of six. Thank you very much. You're, it's, impressive. You know what? He Very is impressive indeed a job. golf expert. That's what I do. That's what I love. Great stuff. <laughs> Thank y'all so much for being here. It was fantastic and a ton of fun. And we're only getting started on the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show. And since we're talking golf, that means I get to work on my golf game. Okay. Let's see. All right. Don't blow it. Uh -oh. My uh -oh. final uh -oh. take uh -oh. when we come back. But can he sink it? Oh, oh. That, that, that. a little too strong. Like Just I a little it. too strong. Looks like I hit it. Just All right, stay with us strong. on the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. All right, one more. This is going for sure. Uh, Bam! Of course it's going. Welcome back to the Ultimate Dallas Sports Show. Uh, Andrew, we're just about done. You did a good job with the questions, by the okay. way. I was just, I was just kidding. Uh, sure, I, yeah, you, not you really. Retroactive here. Yeah. I'm trying to no. make up for it. No, I'm really the not. Stars hurt. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I'm sure. All right, it is time now, you guys, for my final take. Your Dallas Mavericks are creating something special, and I really like it. We saw another chapter unfold, and this thing is turning into a really cool story. Of course, they beat the Rockets. Dante Exum with the three-pointer, beating the buzzer, sending it into overtime. They end up winning big by nine, but the biggest takeaway? The end of the game, Luka and Kyrie exhausted, hugging each other, leaning on each other, and then the entire team joined in for one of those kind of organic moments that you can't fake. I think it was big for this Dallas Mavericks team as they continue to figure out how to be that team that no one wants to face come playoff time. All right, folks, that's it. The maiden voyage of the ultimate Dallas sports show. That's our first one for our esteemed producer, AC Andrew Seeley. I'm Joe Trahan, and for the rest of the crew, thanks so much for joining us tonight, and have a great week. This has been the ultimate Dallas sports show, sponsored by your North Texas Chevy dealers. Together, let's drive.